way to Boyd to pick up Americana from Blackwood Farms. We're going to get two blue Americana and go ahead and get Black Copper Moran while we're at it. Super excited to show you everything that Sharon's got there. And it's a bit of a drive, so be back soon. I'm going to take a nap. Okay, we made it. We're here at Blackwood Farms and I'm so excited to introduce you to Miss Sharon. So this is Miss Sharon. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm doing good. It's such a good day out here. We've got some cloud cover. So cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had 110 out at our place heat yeah, index. Too. Yeah. Here too? Yeah. So I love your place here. This is so cool the way you've got it set up and all of the, the neat uh, Texaco signage and the gas pumps and everything yeah. and all the classic cars. My husband and son, they are really into the cars and it's an addiction with them like chickens and animals are for me so <laughs> yeah and that that's actually what we're here for today we're here to pick up some americana and black copper morans but you've got a lot more than that going on yes, here I, do. I really do we raise painted desert sheep i've been raising sheep now for about 15 years i uh, used to raise anatolian guard dogs and i have a variety of different chickens and i have just acquired two Sebastopol geese and I'm wow. so excited and I also have guineas but the guine I'm looking forward to the guineas <laughs> I, they are noisy last yes, time I was are. here <laughs> that's the only thing I'm hoping they can hear us over them yeah they're so they, they are such good dark guard, guard animals I said you listen to them you always know when there's really something serious to be concerned about yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about them more when we get there so I guess we should uh get going sure let's go Ranger and Minnie, goodness, Minnie's not so many. <laughs> See, big girl. Yeah. And these are the guard dogs you would yes. say? Anatolian. Anatolian, Anatolian shepherds. shepherds. Oh, they're pretty. They're good guards. They're good guards. Mm -hmm. I love your horse. How old is he? He's or is 21. He? he was born here. I had his mother and his grandmother. Mm -hmm. He is double bred dot bar registered American Quarter Horse. He is also registered with the American Palomino Association and the um, I can't think of what it's called. Oh well, two other associations that at the moment have escaped me the name of them. There's the guineas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna come say hello to us, big boy? Pretty horse. He is actually champagne, which it is has just recently in the last five years, ten years, been recognized by the American Quarter Horse Association. His hair shafts are are hollow mm -hmm. and they're three different colors. In the sun he glistens like a mirror. I mean he is just so they have instead of having black hoofs, they have brown hoofs. Their skin is white with black spots on it. And when he was born, he had blue eyes. He now has amber colored eyes. But... That wonderful noise you hear is the sound of Guinea. And we got lots of eggs. She's got lots of eggs. It's really nice in here. I love they've got a cover and perch bars, and she's got so many different colors. Look at this. What are all these colors? I have pies, I have um, white, I have pearls, which are the black with the white spots on them. I have a chocolate, I have a buff colored one, and I have a plain silver. These pies are the colors with the white chest. Uh huh. I like them, they're really pretty. And you told me that the, <laughs> you had told me that the only way to tell the difference between the boys and the girls is through the sound that they make. Yes. The double sound that you hear are the females. And the ones that are just doing the eh, 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 eh noise, that's a male. So, so the double Oh my gosh, they're cute. <laughs> 
So the best thing about guineas, one of the main reasons that oh. people get guineas is because of their their great protective instincts. I've heard they'll even kill snakes. Oh yes, and they eat their weight in bugs, fleas, ticks um, every single day when they're out. Unfortunately, I have a dog who likes to eat them as well, and so uh -oh. I have to keep them pinned up. But they do eat their weight in bugs. They will eradicate fleas and ticks in your yard. Um, snakes are the issue for snakes. most people with yes. chickens. So they're right. they're great, I've heard, to integrate with chickens, but that they can be a little bit territorial. Have you seen that? They can be. Um, I have used to keep them all in one pen, and they were more aggressive towards the roosters. Towards the roosters. That's probably typical <laughs> male trait. <laughs> I love this little brown one right here. Yeah, it's he's cute. All right, let's look at some other stuff. We are over here buying something a little bit out of uh, my experience range. I know nothing about these animals. You're gonna have to tell me all about these. What are what are we looking at here? These are painted desert sheep. They are a hair sheep, therefore they shed like a dog. You don't have to shear them. Um, they generally have twins. Uh, you can see the range of colors that I have here. Uh, this, these three are my oldest females. The little two laying down are two new ones that I just acquired about a month ago. It's a mother and a daughter. Now you just told me, but tell me again for everybody else. I am so silly. I don't know the difference between a sheep and a goat. How can you tell real quick? Tell, you can tell a sheep from a goat is that tails on the sheep go down and goat tails go up. So anytime you see tails down, those are sheep and tell on goats go up. So they're easier to tell that way. Oh, that's cool. And, and you sell these? Yes. How we, old do they have to be before they can be rehomed? We like to keep our lambs for 12 weeks. 12 weeks. That gives them long enough to get all of the nutrients and start a really good start on being able to leave their moms and basically about 12 weeks they really start draining the, the ewes. And okay. they start losing weight and that sort of thing. So if it's a really big lamb, sometimes I will get rid of it between nine and 10 months if it's doing really, really well. But generally I like to keep them for 12 weeks. Cool. And, and how old are they before you get to shear them the first time? Well, they don't shear. They shed like a dog. So oh, okay. you don't have to shear them. Okay, if you want to harvest the wood, can you? The wool, yes, you can wool. pull it off. As you can see, this one over here hasn't, she's quite old. She hasn't um, lost her wool for the winter. Um, it does pull off. I just haven't gotten in there and pulled it off of her yet. Okay, so just um, pretty much if you want the wool as it grows, you get it as you need it. Right. Yeah. But it will fall off otherwise. That's good to know. You see, this is some that has uh. fallen off. Um, it's sort of matted. I don't know that you could spin this, but um, again, I've never tried, and so I'm not sure. Okay. And is this a boy, the boy? The boys over here? These are my two new rams that are going to be breeders. They are only about 14 weeks old. And a ram is just a baby, a uh, boy sheep. Yes. Okay. And they grow horns. I can see uh, that. These guys um, both come from trophy horn stock. Mm -hmm. They are measured um, uh. and are classified as bronze, silver, and gold. Gold is 93 inches and more, so you can tell that that's going to be quite a long, huge horn. Mm -hmm. um, they are used for breeding. You can... Um, slaughter them and use, you know, eat the meat. It's quite good. It's quite similar to beef. Um, I like it. And then they also, some of the trophy horn rams are sold at a sale that is held twice a year at Hamilton, Texas in February and in October. And that's their longhorn sale. And those, in the sheep and goats that are sold in that sale generally go to hunt ranches to be for trophy hunters. Okay, awesome, thanks. You're welcome. These are the rest of the sheep. So many colors, so many freckles. 
might be partial to freckles. I don't know. Yeah. $300 a piece. Wow, two or three hundred dollars. I love the way the feathers curl. With the chickens, you call that frizzle. What do you call it with duck? It's, it's, or geese. It's just the Sebastopol's that are the only ones that exhibit this. And they're called Sebastopol geese? Yes. Are they friendly or am I going to lose a shoe here? Well, <laughs> the gray one is a female and she was not hand raised. Mm -hmm. The white one was hatched by my sister-in-law and gifted to me and he has been hand raised. So he will let me pet him and pick him up. Um, she's a little bit more standoffish. Standoffish. Yeah. They're so cute. Awesome. How long does it take to hatch, um, incubate the eggs? They're about the same as a, as a duck. It takes about 30, 31, 32 days. And are they good at, at weeding? And, and they are. What, they what do you breed them for? They don't eat uh, insects or meat of any sort. They eat grain, grass. I turn them out during the day and they forage on the grass and I don't know if she's talking to me or trying to scare me away. Yeah. <laughs> you are chatty though, aren't you? Sam said, will you let me get closer? No. Nope. No. No. She says, no. 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 I don't know you. Oh, they're pretty. I love their feathers. Okay. This is actually what we're here for. This is the exciting part. So these are Wheaton and Blue Wheaton and Blue Wheaton Splash Americana. So tell me some about your birds. The, these are from the Paul Smith lines. He is the uh, president of the Southwest chapter of the Americana Club. Mm -hmm. He lives in Gainesville, Texas. And I obtained these and have been getting stock from him for many years. Mm -hmm. um, they are beautiful birds, really Thank pretty you. birds. I think this is my favorite color of the Americana, especially the, the blue wheat and splash yeah. are just incredible. And on the hens, you can tell if they have a black feather, they're weed, wheaten. If they have white feathers, like the one that's under walking under the roost, she is a splash. And if they have a blue or gray tail feather, they are a blue. Okay. The one up against the hen is just walking this way. She has a blue tail feather. Mm -hmm. So does this one. So. And the blues are... So these are, uh, they've been genetically tested for the blue egg laying gene. I know that because they're from the Paul Smith line. Yes. And they've just got beautiful confirmations. Easter eggers should have big fluke, or I'm sorry, not Easter eggers. Americanas should have big floofy cheeks and um, nice straight gray legs. These look beautiful. I love the rose combs on them. The, I found that they do have a little bit more difficulty in the heat because of all those feathers on their face. If you notice that, too. yes. And I recently lost both of my ruse uh, just last week to the heat. Um, so I am in the process of getting another one. He, they, he will be coming from a. Um, offspring of the of, of the Paul Smith line. Paul Smith recently lost all of his blue Wheaton chicks, and so he has none to sell. But he did give me a breeder who has his line, and I will be getting hens and a roo from this person in the fall. So next year you'll be back to breeding. I'll be back to breeding. Yes, that's great. How much do you ask per chick? I normally ask nine fifty per chick. Um, that's a good rate. I've seen them go a lot higher than that, yes. so that's a good rate. Yes. And I do sell uh, hatching eggs as well. At the moment, I don't don't have any adults to spare, um, but these are my girls, and some of them are getting older, and so I am going to get some replacements in the fall. I absolutely, I, I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm so jealous of this setup. This is incredible. This oh, is really you. nice. It took me a long time to figure out how I wanted it to lay out. And once I got it here and we worked on it for about three weeks, it turned out better than I imagined it would. Well, let's see what's in it. So what have we got in this first pen? In the first pen, we have a mixture of Easter eggers and the salmon Favaroli. Favaroli. I think yeah, that's, that's how it's said, yeah. Can we open the door and see her? 
all the pretty babies. I love Easter eggers. The Easter eggers are, uh, are a mixed breed. You take a bird like an Americana or a leg bar that's got the blue egg laying gene. You mix it with pretty much anything else and you end up with an Easter egger. And they give you green eggs. Right. Now, the bird you mix it with is going to determine the shade of green. So if you start off with a blue egg and you mix it with like a copper moran, which she does have some, we'll get to see those here in a little bit, you get what's called an olive egger and they make a dark green egg. Whereas if you mix it with like a leghorn, which produces a white egg, then you're gonna end up with more pastel colored blue or green eggs. And then of course, cream egg, brown egg layers of all shades in between will give you different various shades of green. So the best way to get a lot of color variation in your flock is to add Easter eggers of various types that have been mixed with different greens. In this next pen. And these are blue Americanas. They, now, these were just babies last time I was here, weren't yes, they? Yes, and they have really grown. Wow, have these, they? Depending on how you breed them, as well as for the Wheatons, because they are also a tricolor breed, you will get black, blue, and a splash. Uh, depending on how you breed them, um, if you breed a blue to any color, you will get um, the blue plus what color you breed to, whether a splash or a black. If you breed to a blue on blue, you get three. 50% blue, 25% black, and 25% splash. And awesome. then various colors, depending if you do black to splash or whatever. I love this splash, this black and white one right there. Yeah, he really is quite different. And it's a very unique color pattern, I love that. And I like this cool. setup with these nice runs, everything's covered. I bet you don't have hardly any problems with predators getting in here either, Not do you? in here, no. No, this is very secure. I love this setup. Really nice. Okay. I love all the speckles on these next ones. What are these? These are Jubilee Orpingtons. Jubilee. They're my big butt girls. They <laughs> and these here in the front are just coming about six to eight months old. So... Now, two girls in the back are more much older. Yeah, Orphingtons get really, really big. I've had yes. buff Orphingtons before, and the best thing about Orphingtons here in the South is they're considered a loose feathered breed, which means that they uh, they they handle the heat a lot better than a lot of other birds because they have more airflow around and circulation around the individual uh, feathers and up against their skin. So. These are just beautiful. I love all of those speckles and everything on yes, them. Yes, I'm, I'm and crazy And they make brown eggs, stuff. right? Yes, they're a pale brown egg. They were developed for the Queen of England in her Jubilee year. A English uh, breeder developed this breed for her and gave her a flock on her Jubilee anniversary. Awesome. Uh, they were not available in the United States until about 10, 12 years ago. And they have become quite popular. I think they're quite beautiful. Uh, they really are. I love the coloration. And I think the best part about if you've got a small flock and the Jubilee colors is every bird is so distinctly so different. different. You yes. can absolutely track the health and, and and just how they're doing. Right. So they're, they're really cool. Thank you. Now these are the other babies we're actually here to pick up. These are called Black Copper Moran. And what Morans are most famous for is that Copper Morans make the darkest chicken eggs that you can get on the market. They're really dark, dark chocolate brown eggs. And I love the way the Black <laughs> Copper Morans in particular, um, their feathers just shiver. And uh, yeah, they're, they're getting some extra protein here. A little bit of extra protein. Hey girls. But you can see the color of the eggs. That's, that's kind of why I'm getting over here to this is just really dark, dark brown eggs there, see that? And I love the boys, they have just got so many colors in their feathers and when they get in the light, see how he shimmers? Look at that beautiful boy. What a pretty boy. They're a little camera shy, I get close to them and they take off. Look how pretty them is. All the feathers. So you mix a black copper moran with the Americana and that's how you end up with olive eggers. 
Well, Miss Sharon, thank you so oh, much. You're so welcome. I'm, I've enjoyed this. This has been fun. I, I um, love my chickens a lot. As you can tell, I hope that, um, and it, like I said, I sell um, hatching eggs in all of the varieties as well as chicks. But this will be next spring before I have enough on each side to be able to sell. Yeah, no, that's great. We're coming up on the end of the season anyway. So, and it looks like you've got so much going on, you're not going to be suffering in the meantime. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, how are people going to reach you? Well, I'm on Facebook, Sharon Blackwood. I also have one for Blackwood Farms. Um, my contact information is on both. So, if you have any interest in any of the sheep or the chickens, or the dogs. Or the dogs. I'll be more than welcome to um, to give you information about each one. Okay, great. I'll include the contact information at the in the descriptions at the bottom of this video for everybody too. Okay, great. All right, say bye. Bye. Love your brooder setup in here in this barn. This is really cool. And are these all my babies? These are all your little babies. Aww. Um, the two lighter colored ones, those are the Americana, right? Yes. And this one is as well, but so I think we got it's three. going to be a room. You think so? You can keep that one then. Yeah. I don't need a room. <laughs> but I'm just so... And then the black, uh, Mar uh, the black copper marange chips. Okay. These are... And there's three of those? Yes, three of these. Okay. These are our little black copper marron chicks. Oh, look how cute he is. We got a brooder already set up at the house oh, and ready good. to go for them. So the way you can tell the difference between roosters and hens when they're this age between the pullets and the roosters on the Americana is that the roosters get much darker feathers. A Orpington mix. Oh, you These can tell because yeah, of the feathers on the feet. Yeah. It's cute. And so I'm not cute. sure how this one got stuck in the bunch. Because um, I don't have an Orpington rooster at the moment. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, he came from a blue egg. And <laughs> because I had only blue eggs in the incubator. Well, so sometimes... I'm not sure where this little guy, how he snuck into the incubator, but he did. Well, he is available. I'm not going to take the mix, baby. Yeah. So if anybody's interested, this little guy is absolutely ready for a new home. Yes, he is. All right. These here are a little bit older. They are Americanas. Um, I have a brew and a, a pullet in this pen. Mm -hmm. And Pretty baby. We're going to get back to the house, and when we get there, I'm going to pull them out and we're going to talk about the difference between Americanas and Easter Eggers. Love country drives.
Okay, we made it home. That was a long drive, but well worth it. I love the country scenery, and her place is so beautiful. I absolutely love Blackwood Farms. Sharon, you do a wonderful job with those animals. They are just gorgeous. So, now that we're home, let's look at these birds up close and talk about what is different between an Americana and an Easter Egger. So, first off, an Americana is full blood, spelled like this. Anything else spelled differently is considered an Easter Egger. So, how did we end up with Americana chickens? They were actually an American breed domesticated right here in America, hence the name Americana. They were bred out of the Araucanas, which come from Chile. And these birds give beautiful blue eggs. They have the blue egg laying gene from the Araucana, and they have just been perfected to where they have a rose comb and gray legs and very specific color patterns. Today, I came home with some blue Wheaton, blue Wheaton Splash, and Wheaton Americana. So those are three different variations of basically the same color. Um, Sharon was kind of showing us the difference earlier at the farm, and I think I've got basically one of each girl and then a Splash Rooster, which I'm kind of excited about. He's beautiful. The name of Abraham. So in here in a minute, we'll meet Abraham and then. So Americana chickens, why do you need Americana? Other than the fact that they make beautiful blue eggs, if you want a colorful flock, they are a great way to get it. You take an Americana heritage chicken, you mix it with pretty much anything else, and you get Easter eggers. Now there is some debate. Some people say that you can get Easter eggers by breeding any chicken that has the blue egg laying gene. And if that's the case, then you could legitimately say that leg bars can be mixed with anything else to produce Easter eggers as well. So depending on the person's definition of an Easter egger, generally speaking, Americanas are the birds to use. Leg bars also work, but you generally they'll be labeled leg bar Easter egger if they have leg bar as opposed to Americana. Now, Americanas, as we mentioned, have a rose comb, gray legs, very specific feather colors and patterns. There's lots of variety. There's there's the Wheaton, there's Splash, there's uh, Calico, there's Blue Lavender, Black, White, uh, you name it, they've probably got an Americana in that color. Now, a lot of people say, even if it's an Americana, bred with Americanas and nothing but Americanas and has nothing but that blue egg laying gene, if the colors aren't right, if they don't match one of the specified color patterns, then it's an Easter egg. I disagree. A breed is based off of genetics. And yes, the genetics are different because the color is different. But it's still got the blue egg laying gene. It's still got the rose comb. They've still got the gray legs. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a different colored Americana. But a lot of people disagree to each their own. If you are breeding Americana for show, it matters. If you're breeding them for your backyard flock or if you're breeding them as Easter eggers, which is what I use them for, then it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. They want pretty colors. That's the deal. So why do you want Americana other than blue eggs? Well, one, they're great, great foragers. They're really winter hardy birds. All those feathers around the face kind of insulate and the fact that that rose comb is smaller and not sticking up, it doesn't have as much air flow around it, so they're not as susceptible to frost. Now, if you live in hot climates, that can be a bad thing because they are a little bit more heat sensitive. They are extremely friendly. The girls get along with just about everybody. The boys, I found, can be a little bit protective. They don't get along with other roosters as good as I would like. So, Easter eggers. So, you've mixed your Americana with, say, some other birds, maybe a Moran or Orphington's, and you've got Easter eggers. What is the difference? How can you tell if it's a mixed breed? Easter eggers generally have a fan comb. So they have better ventilation off the comb. They don't get hot as easy. They are more susceptible to frost and direct sun, though. They sometimes will have the cheek feathers. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes their legs will be yellow. Sometimes they'll be gray. really depends on what it's mixed with. But the main difference is that an Easter egger is going to give you green eggs. 
So there's lots of variation. The most common kind, the one that you hear everybody talk about, all the kind are olive eggers. That is basically most commonly made by mixing an Americana and a Moran. Usually copper, sometimes cuckoo, sometimes some of the other colors. But the Morans have really dark, dark brown eggs. They give you the darkest brown eggs, as we mentioned earlier, that you can get. You mix that with the blue eggs, you end up with a really dark green egg that is termed olive colored. Now, if you mix it with an Orphington, Orphingtons give kind of creamy colored eggs. So you mix Orphington and Americana and you end up with like a sage or green eggs. And there's lots of fluctuation and variation. It all varies depending on the individual bird. So let's look at some birds and quit jammering. So here's our Americana babies. These are four of them. We've actually got five. The little one digging under the feeder, that's our rooster. And you can tell because of how much darker his feathers are. Now those feathers start to come in around four or five weeks and you can kind of start to tell the difference in gender, which is actually about half the time it takes with most breeds. So they're not auto sexing exactly, but I would call them early sexting because you can sex them at a younger, earlier age than most other breeds. So this is one of our splashes. This is our splash girl right here. And then over there, I believe that's gonna be a blue Wheaton. And in the back, back there, I believe, is going to be just a normal Wheaton, not blue Wheaton, just normal Wheaton. Let's see if I can get a shot from her. Well, she does have some blue. I may have two splashes and a, and a blue Wheaton. I'm not 100% positive yet. They're still getting their feathers in. He is definitely a splash and he is gorgeous. We're gonna name him Abraham. And then I'm thinking that we're gonna name the girls Mary, Martha, uh, probably um, Laurel, and Jackie. All presidential wives names in case you didn't notice. Yeah, I'm um, brilliant like that. So those are full blood and you can see they've got that rose comb. Their feathers aren't totally loose, but they're looser than most breeds, so that does help with the heat sub. And then there's those beautiful slate colored, is what they call them, they're gray, but slate colored legs. Cute babies. Let's look at some Easter eggers now. All right. In here, we actually have a variety of Easter eggers. This one here was mixed with a black Sayama. I believe he had an I Ayam Samani. Sorry, not Sayama, Samani. Um, and I, I'm getting that because of the black comb and everything. It seems to be just a mix right there. And then got some pretty ones that look like they were mixed with maybe possibly, oh, it's hard to say, maybe Red Sex Link or Orphington perhaps or Rhode Island Red. I'm not sure what those red ones are mixed with, but they're beautiful birds, really healthy good, nice feet, but you can see some of them have yellow legs, some of them have black legs, some of them have slate, no pink ones this time, probably keeping the little white one, and if it turns out to be a little girl, the little bitty Seymana, Sayama mix there, Seymani mix there is adorable. Uh, I've already got home, uh, a home for the little one with the twisted feet, and then we've got two others, and I'm hoping that they're girls, because I have some people that are looking for some really good girls, and they look like they're going to be great. And I expect every one of these birds to give me a shade of green of some sort. Now, the great thing about Easter Eggers is they do have that fan comb, so they, like I mentioned, are a little bit more heat resistant. They, they don't do as good in the cold, but in Texas, that's not really that much of a big deal, except for maybe like three weeks out of the year. So, no big deal. Oh, another good thing about Easter Eggers, being a mixed breed, they aren't, they don't have as limited a genetic uh, makeup. And as a result, they actually have a little bit better immune system. So they tend to be more resistant to diseases than Americanas and other purebloods. These are the little bitty guys here that we just picked up today. So the lighter colored one there is a Wheaton Americana, possibly blue Wheaton from the looks of the feathers, and definitely a female. There's three little black ones. Those are actually Copper Moran. I'm really looking forward to adding them to the Americana flock and making some olive eggers. They should make really beautiful dark green, dark, dark green eggs once they, uh, their babies should anyway. These will make dark brown eggs. Their babies will make dark green eggs. Hey, baby little guys. 
see, when they're babies, their feet tend to still be a little bit pinkish. So if you're looking for chicks and you see that they've got a little bit of pink in their legs, don't panic. They'll, it'll darken up as they get older. Also, real quick, I want to give Sharon another shout out. Girl, you are wonderful. I had so much fun visiting your beautiful farm. I love your setup and arrangement and your animals are spectacular. I really hope that you enjoyed visiting with me as much as I enjoyed visiting with you. And thanks again for letting me do this video. Okay, so that's the difference between Americana and Easter egg. Now let's look at an adult or two. pretty black Americana here. I love how her feathers shimmer. We've waited until the evening time to catch her when they're in the roost. You see those gray legs and that pretty rose comb. And she's just a really good Americana specimen. She's not ever been in the house before. She's not sure what to do with herself again. Now sometimes birds will pluck their cheek feathers to reduce heat and that's that's kind of what's going on here. She has plucked her feathers around her face to help vent off some of the heat so she can get cooler. And that's something that Americana will do. So it happens. Bye bye pretty girl. She's not quite sure what's going on. She is, and Cloudy's gonna get real inquisitive here. She says, eh, maybe not. This one's as big as I am. <laughs> This is a Lavender Americana. They are beautiful birds. I love the gray and the feathers. And there you can see that rose comb. Get right up close and see what that looks like. And her pretty gray legs. And this is a really good specimen of an Americana of a Lavender. And she is just being very patient with us right now. She's, she's, she's like, this is my life. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to freeze and pretend I'm a statue and maybe it won't eat me. We're not going to eat you, honey. You're too good an egglet. So if you're going for a good, hearty, colorful flock, Easter eggers and Americanas are almost a must go to. Like, absolutely. You can get so many shades of green and, and blues out of them just by mixing them up. And they're hardy, they, they are friendly, really sweet natured birds and great foragers too. Hope this helps. Thanks for joining me, y'all. I had a great time today and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down, but please post in the comments why you marked it either way so I know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. That uh, comment section is kind of like my uh, report card. It lets me know how I can improve and what y'all enjoyed so I don't post a bunch of stuff that bores you to death. So hopefully this didn't bore you to death and you enjoyed it and you'll give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. We are going to be putting up the Guardian Coop here very, very shortly and that's going to be what these Americana go in. So, <sighs> Busy week. 